Hey, welcome back to shit. Hey, welcome back to the Sask. Oh man. Wrong shirt. Hey, welcome back to the SAS course. And in this video, we're gonna be learning all about bourbon. I really like bourbon. I also really like the framework bourbon. Funny, funny, Brad. Anyway, <laughs> it's a simple and lightweight mix-in library for SAS. Think, think Bootstrap, think Compass, think uh, Foundation, think Suzy, think all these frameworks we've been kind of talking about and the few of them that we've been playing with. But this one's great and it's my favorite because it's so lightweight. It's really simple to use. It's easy to install. And unlike some other frameworks, this Bourbon, when you install Bourbon, you don't get any of the bulk of the CSS automatically installed, like Bootstrap or, or Foundation. Nothing's there. You just have access to pulling in those variables, those mix-ins those mix and those functions. And when you pull those in, you only get the CSS that you want, that you need. So it's super lightweight, keeps your sites and your applications really, really uh, light and fluffy. So that's what's great about Bourbon. It's also really easy to use. You get a bunch of mix-ins, variables, and uh, functions, add-ons that are really easy to implement and speed up your dev time immensely. So why don't we jump in and start using it? So the first thing you need to do is open up your uh, frameworks folder. And in the frameworks folder, you're going to see Bourbon Student. And that's the one we're going to be working with. Bourbon Final is the final files that uh, at the end of this video, that's where we're going to be at. So you can reference those. But Bourbon Student is where we're both going to be starting from right here as we work our way through the video. We've got an index file with some markup in here. And it looks like this in the browser. Very, very simple. Not very good looking. And we're going to use Bourbon to make it good looking. It kind of sounded rude. Anyway, here's what's going to happen. We're going to install Bourbon. Uh, you need to kind of like, uh, you know, SAS based off of Ruby. So we need to use our command line to install the Bourbon gem on our machine. So let's jump into the command line terminal. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to sudo gem install Bourbon. And that's going to go ahead and install the Bourbon gem on, on my machine. So I'm at ver Bourbon version 4.2.7. And if you're in the future, huh, future people, we're gonna be, uh, you might be on version five. So some of the variables and stuff might not work for you because they're always updating things. Uh, and in version five, some of the variables and mixins have different names. So you might have a few conflicts if you're installing version 5.0 point whatever. So if you wanna fall back during the to 4.2.7 while you're learning, you can easily do that by, you know, sudo gem install bourbon and then version, I think this is how you do it. Yes, so you just, with the with the version flag, you'd go dash V and then 4.2.7. So that's how you'd install the version that I'm using so that you can be on the same page. And then when you're done, you can uninstall that and then install the latest and greatest version of Bourbon. But we're gonna use the stable 4.2.7 at the time of this video. Everyone's good. So now what we're gonna do, now that we have Bourbon installed, we need to change directories into our Bourbon website here that we're playing with. So we're gonna go CD, we're on the desktop, at least I am. G Frameworks, we're gonna be looking for Bourbon Student. Great, and now we want to install the actual Bourbon files in the SAS folder and in the plugins folder, because it's a plugin. That's what we're considering it. And we're gonna do that by say Bourbon install, and then you can say dash dash path to tell it where you want it to install specifically. And then we're gonna say SAS slash zero dash plugins. Boom, install. The files were installed right here, Bourbon. Everything's good. All the folders, the add-ons, functions, helpers, and then we've got the Bourbon SCSS import file. So now all we've got to do is in our plugins directory, import Bourbon slash Bourbon. And we don't need to write the file extension because it knows it's an SCSS file right here. Bourbon slash Bourbon. Perfect. So now Bourbon is available to us. As simple as that. Uh, and now one thing to note, don't change any of these files. The source files for any plugin, Bootstrap, 
uh, Foundation, Suzy, any of the frameworks, don't change the actual source files because when you update to another version, you're gonna lose all your work. So you wanna just import those files and use them so that you can easily update or down date, downgrade to a different version and not lose your stuff. Okay, so now we're good to go. You can also use CodeKit or Hammer and stuff to compile your code, but we're gonna be using uh, command line, at least I am. You're welcome to use CodeKit. CodeKit also has a built-in ability to install Bourbon into your website. Let me just show you really quick. So I can, you know, I can add a new project. I'm gonna add Bourbon and then I'm gonna say add. So that's in there and I can click on the project settings, go to frameworks, Bourbon, and then all you have to do is, you don't even have to install Bourbon it looks like. It looks like with CodeKit you just have to import Bourbon in your plugins and CodeKit will do the rest for you. Or you can optionally install Bourbon files to keep it locked to a certain version. So say version 4.2.7. So that's really cool. If you're using CodeKit, all you have to do is just import Bourbon and then CodeKit does the rest. So that's actually kind of cool for those of you not wanting to use the command line. Okay. Back to business. Now what we need to do is we need to tell SAS to watch the SAS folder and output to CSS and we are good to go. Now if I show you my CSS right now, you're gonna see that there is no bourbon in there. Just a few lines of CSS, 50 something lines, 60, 59 lines of CSS. There's no bourbon in there until I call specific mixins and functions and variables, which is really great. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna use a bourbon variable called font family or font stacks. Uh, and it allows you to play with different font stacks. I'll show you what I mean. A series of different uh, font stacks available as variables. You can use Georgia, Helvetica, Lucida Grande, Monospace, Verdana, and then it gives you this output, a full font family font stack. So it saves you all that typing. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna go ahead and jump into my common SAS partial under base and let's at the body let's write font family monospace and watch this look at that monospace and if you could change it to something else you could change it to Helvetica if you want and it will change it to Helvetica that looks nice you could change it to Georgia and look what happens it's that's really awesome I'm gonna change it to monospace and the next thing I want to do is for the title here, the level one heading in the index, I want to change that to a logo. And for semantic reasons, it's good to have a, an actual level one heading with the title of your site or your brand or your company name. But I want that to be a logo. So I want to maintain the SEO value of having a level one heading that says the brand name or the logo name, but I want it to be a logo. So I need to hide that text and background image, my logo in there. So you can easily do that in Bourbon by using the hide text mixin. So under brand right here, just call hide text. Done. Now the text will have disappeared somewhere off the screen. But now I want to add a background image and I can easily just say background image and then pull in an image that I have in here but I have a retina screen, so I wanna actually serve up the retina version of the logo for users who are looking on a retina screen, whether that's your iPhone, an Android device that has a retina screen, or a large iMac, like this beautiful piece of equipment right here in front of my face. So I'm gonna do that by using the retina-image mixin. And the arguments you pass in are the path to the image, the normal image, so dot dot slash image slash bourbon dash logo and the retina image default arguments uh, are looking for a PNG file. So you don't have to actually write dot PNG if it's a PNG. If it is a JPEG, then you will likely have to write that. But I don't have to, it just saves me a few keystrokes. Now the width and the height, 294 pixels and 56 pixels. That's the gonna be the background height and width for the image itself but the smaller version 294 by 56 because the large one is actually like 588 pixels wide but we want to serve up the large image but with that small smaller uh, images dimensions so it's really sharp like so look at that look how sharp that is so that is 
if I were to just look at the markup, it's got the level one heading, uh, but what people see on the front is a really beautiful, sharp logo. Awesome. Why don't we play around with a function built into Bourbon called Tint, and that allows you to change the color by wrapping a color with tint or shade, and I'll show you what that is. Let's go to the level three heading, and let's give it a background, background color. Uh, and that's going to be, we're going to say, we could just say blue, and this is what it will look like, like that. But I want to add some white into that color. I want to lighten it up. So I'm going to use tint. So that's going to add 10%, let's say 20% of white into that color. So it's going to lighten it up. So this is different from the lighten. It should be, let's see. You see how lighten actually changes the hue or the actual color? of the blue. I don't want it to do that. I just want it to stay on the same blue, but add some white into the mix. So tint will do that. And so uh, lighten and darken are built in SAS functions, but tint and shade are built in bourbon functions that extend that. And I'm going to change this color, the text color to white for more contrast. Uh, and there we go. So we've got uh, blue tint, 20%. Perfect. So now I want to take this article right here. I have a little article tag. And I want to give it, uh, I want to have it be spanning three columns, but not using floats. I want to use CSS three columns as if you're reading like a, a newspaper or something where it has those columns. So all I got to do is jump into my container SAS partial under layouts. And I'm going to add article as the uh, selector. And I just need to call an, uh, three different bourbon mixins columns, three columns, and 200 pixels as the column width. Column width is a CSS property that lets, it suggests an optimal width for the column. So the column width is the maximum width that a column will become before adding another column. So you're going to have three columns and say you had 100% uh, container width. So as you stretch that width, once the column gets to that 200 pixel mark, it's going to break into a column to a maximum of three columns. So let's Let's just see how that works. So I'm going to save that. And here we go. We've got our three columns. But I want to do a few different things here. So what if I just showed you maybe a different example of a different column width? Let's see if 100 does anything. 100 doesn't do anything because that's the min. So let's do a higher column width. Watch what happens. You see how now there's only two columns, even though I said three? That's because the width is greater than 400 pixels. So once it gets closer to that, so see here, look, I put 460. There is not enough room to have two 460 wide columns in this layout because it would overflow. But if I have the, the size be a size where they can actually fit, there's going to be two columns here. If the width of the container was wider, then we would have three 400 pixel columns. But I'm just going to say 200 pixels is that threshold so I can have three columns like so. So that's how the column width works. And now we're going to add a column rule using another mix in. And we're going to say solid one pixel triple C. <laughs> and there we go, a little bit of a column rule. And one last thing, we're going to say column gap to give it some space. And we're going to give it the width of gutter, which is a variable in our variables partial for around 30 pixels. And there we go. Now we have some space in between there. It breathes. It looks good. So that is the column, the CSS three columns using bourbon. And this is what the output would look like right here. Look at all that CSS that we would have had to write otherwise. That's so great. So now what we're going to do is we're going to play with these boxes. We're going to float them. We're going to add some shade. We're going to throw some shade and then we're going to, um, eventually we're going to animate them, but we'll get there. So let's jump into box under modules, box partial, and let's, let's play with them. Let's, uh, we're going to need to give them a size so I can say height and width, but I can use the built in bourbon mix in called size and just say 280 and 100 pixels. And that's going to give it a height and width just by using that. So it saves me a, a little bit of coding there. I'm going to say the background is going to be teal, but we're going to throw some shade. So this is opposite of uh, tint. It's actually adding black. So there we go. It's a bit darker. And now what we're going to do is we're going to float all of these boxes left and they will float. It looks great, but we have a problem. 
With floats, the parent container collapsed because it has no integrity. These boxes floated and it's collapsed its parent. So, poor parent, we need to help it out. We need to clear it. And we can use a clear fix, obviously. Bourbon has a built-in clear fix mix-in. Saves us a ton of time. We don't have to go looking on how to do it. Simply go to your common SAS partial. And let's add a selector for section. I'm saying section because I'm wrapping all of these boxes in a section tag. And that's what's collapsed. This is how easy the clear fix is. Just like that. So there we go. That has been cleared. Everyone's happy.